Hi, welcome back to another episode of Live from My Parents' Basement. This week we had a very long podcast with Wyatt Legrand and Adam Dean. It's actually going to be a three-parter. For laziness sake, this will be the only one out of the three that's going to have an intro because you get it. Uh, we talk about a lot of different things, our college experiences, um, watches, sunglasses, the TV show Fargo, the movie Fargo as well, the Coen Brothers movies, uh, lots of interesting conversation, uh, talk about vacations a lot, uh, but I hope you enjoy it, thanks. The way... All right, we're back, I'm back, we're back this week, I'm with Adam. Are we starting? Wyatt Legrand, local artist and teacher. That's me. And celebrity. <laughs> I I'm appreciate a, that. I'm an aspiring artist. An aspiring artist? Yeah, I what's did your, a cornucopia in what's high your, school. What's, your, what's the form that you work in? The form, any form, man. Any medium, doesn't matter Dude, to you? Dude, doesn't matter. You doesn't a, matter what environment I'm painting, it's just as long as I'm doing it. Are you a filmmaker? I've dabbled in it. What, what have you been in? Just all sorts of films. Really? Yeah. We've got the really, really uh, cheap cult classics. Like what? No, nah, not really. I've uh, just usually just cheap iPhone shot films. Well, you got to elaborate on that. Don't leave me hanging. Well, in uh, my junior year, uh, a certain teacher, Mr. Muma was his name. I know, I'm dropping a name here, but we uh, shot a movie and it was Marley and me. I ended up, I had Who's a lead role. No, I uh, I wish. But we. <laughs> I had a lead role in that and James Wayne, who was graduated at the time, ended up kicking me out of the lead role because he was helping out and evidently he edged his way into... How, did he, how was he involved if he had graduated? Well, he was dating Haley DeVito at the time. So, and she was in my group and I was like the lead, I was Owen Wilson, you know, and I was like the head guy and I was so happy. And then all of a sudden I just somehow got to be, I somehow I got to be a security guard who had one little like 10 second screen the role, footage. The role of a lifetime portraying Owen Wilson and Marley and me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Laugh now. But, but it didn't happen? We don't have any footage of this? Well, the footage that was has, I don't know what happened, but if I could find this lost film... Boy, it's a keeper. You'd have millions to make. No, oh, more like billions. Well, the three of us tonight ate at the Irish Lion. The Irish Lion. The Irish Lion. I immediately Irish. forgot where we ate at, but it was really good. I had fish and chips with a nice sweet coleslaw and a malt vinegar, some tartar sauce, a little bit of ketchup. It was great. A, that was a very uh, Food Network way of uh, describing. I am. Describing it. I like to think of myself as Rachel Ray. <laughs> Rachel Ray. Rachel Ray was I there. had a friend who thought she was really cute. I uh, had a crush on her. Um, I love I, I, Ina, Ina Gard, Gardner. Um, Which one the barefoot she? Contess, Contessa. Oh, my mom hates her so much. Oh, I, 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 I love her because, but the thing about it is uh, she makes these really great dishes that are um, things that I think I would really like. Um, and she talks about how simple it is and everything goes on and on and on. Um, I'm pretty sure she, every meal she makes costs at least like two hundred dollars. You know, it's, it's like it's the most extravagant and thing here ever. You have some. Uh, I ate it. Some, what are the the truffles? The black truffle, black truffle shaved black truffle. The black truffles. Yeah. Shaved truffles with the caviar. Yeah, she 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 uses that stuff, and it, it looks delicious to me. But uh, um, uh, that stuff is on all the time on the weekends, and, and this would actually be a good segue. Uh, for what I think you're going to be talking about this evening, uh, te television. And I don't want to be the guy that, um, I always feel like that hipster kind of guy that's like, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't watch much television, uh, you know, but I, I don't. But the television is always on. Yeah. So, um, and Food Network happens to be on quite a bit. So I'm quite familiar with Rachel Ray and the Pioneer Woman. My mom likes her recipes. I like the pioneer. God, I sound like a woman. <laughs> I, I sound like my mom. My mom loves her recipes. Pioneer woman. She, I like to do impressions of them, and I, I'm not going to do it tonight. Maybe on another <laughs> podcast. Uh, but it, I have a lot of fun with it. And um, there are some that I absolutely don't like. I really like Bobby Flay. Bobby Flay's cool. I feel like um, he's good. Yeah. And nobody, nobody beats Bobby Flay. No. I beat Bobby Flay. No. Maybe Howie Mandel. <laughs> But by the time no. this is over, everybody's going to be like, man, Legrand, what a hypocrite. I don't watch television, and he knows 
Bobby Flay, beat Bobby Flay. Uh, but it's between Food Network and like HGTV, the Property Brothers. Yeah, they you they do hit the spot. You hate them. I do, but they're all the time. <laughs> I I do. My, my wife loves to <laughs> loves to watch that stuff. I, I don't know if she really loves to watch it, but it, it seems to be on. Um, those dudes don't swing hammers. Those. Those jeans are way too tight to swing hammers. <laughs> well, it's like I was watching it. I was telling you guys last time I was watching it at my grandma's, and I was like, "Oh, that you know, that's nice. Get their home remodeled for like free." And my grandma's like, "No, like I yeah. think they pay for all of this." I'm like, "That's like said, that's like that's eighty five thousand yeah. dollars worth of just repairs." And she's like, "Yeah." I'm like, well, well, "Who cares? What's the point? It's not Ty know. Pennington f- flipping a dream house in a day. Come on." I don't know. There, there's a there's a lot of Dudes my age, though, that are doing... We have really big honeydew lists now because of the Property Brothers and uh, and uh, Fixer Upper. That, um... What's her name? Jo- Joanna Gaines? Joanna Gaines, you need to tone it down because I'm never going to be able to, you know, finish the honeydew list. Um, <laughs> it's it's never-ending, and it'll never look as good as what you put on television. See, I'm uh, in trouble. Wait, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, damn you, Joanna Gaines. Damn you. Damn you to hell. I, I wouldn't go that far. She's probably a really sweet lady. But yeah. she did, but but um I'm having a having a hard time of it with the um... See, we our family, we've always watched Food Network actually. Yeah. It's odd. Oh that's a creepy looking bug behind there. It's alright, I'm immune. Oh, that's like a centipede or a millipede. That, that thing's weird looking. I mean, I don't know. It's fine. Who cares? Hey, you know, it's um, it's the apartment. Part. Yeah. Part their family might as well be me familia as Vin mm. Diesel would say mm. in the Fast and Furious movies. Anyway, uh, uh, we've Paul always Walker. watched Food Network. Like we've always watched the cake baking shows. Yeah, I didn't get as big into those. I, like, I always uh, British baking show. I've never watched that. I've, oh, I'm so. Are you right now? I, yes, I'm fully in. I watched that, and what they do with custard and jam is amazing. I didn't know jam could be used in so many different things. They did it with their tea and crumpets. They don't brush their teeth, but whatever <laughs> what? is the case. What? You no ever brushes. seen a... British people, they, they always have bad teeth. Well, I just think oh, that might have to do with the dental situation over there, though. I don't think it's because... I think, no, I think it's a... Tea. I think it's they do it with coffee. I, I think you... And they drink so much coffee and tea. But anyway, no matter what, I still watch that show and I'm just like, those pastries are what I want to make one day. Just for fun. You know, it's just like... You got a nice kitchen upstairs. You can, you can I dabbled in making it. a six egg omelet. Six egg omelet. <laughs> six I dabbled. egg omelet. Yep. I, uh, Adam got out this, the biggest bowl we had and he's like, I'm going to make an omelet. I'm like, you know how to make an omelet? Yeah, it's like, Yeah. I got a gallon of milk, just started pouring it in. Yeah, Didn't even measure. I eyeballed it. He which probably meant, did, you know. How much milk do you think you probably did? Did I don't six, put milk in six my cups. scrambled eggs or omelets, but how much uh, milk do you, do you think? I mean, uh, <laughs> well, I don't use six eggs. Uh, so so uh, not not very much. I guess I guess uh, what well, you're, you're going for fluffiness with the milk, right? Yeah. That's, that's the whole... Yeah, yeah you're going gonna to eat a quart of milk for <laughs> six eggs. I, don't I did. How much did you, I, milk did you put in? Probably about a quart of milk. <laughs> I mean, it looked like it was, I don't want to say it was 50-50, but I'd say it was 60 egg, 40 milk. And I was like, that's good. Now, how long did that take to cook? He, like, just sat it and walked away. Wow. Quite a while. I I don't know what the difference, what what is a a souffle? Souffle. Oh, my goodness. That that was pretty much that what this was. This could have been a souffle. Because I told him. I've made a souffle. I I I don't know if I go that far. There we go. It's like, I can't, I can't flip an omelet when it's like a two egg omelet. I'm like, Adam, that's six eggs. Like, no, I can do it. And he was just like trying to balance it on just like the handle of the thing. I'm like, can you... listen, hey, it's all in technique. Okay. What was your technique? First of all, my technique was just letting it be. At one point, Adam, you did ask me, does this look done to you? And it was just like runny egg. <laughs> I do know it's you like, made me. Well, I do. I do know you made me clean the bowl about twelve times because of salmonella. Because you, you you had egg on your hands and you were <laughs> touching everything. I'm like, what are you? Do-? You're like, what? I'm like, you have to wash your hand. I'm like, you have to wipe down everything now. I mean, I know there's like a one in fifty thousand or one in ten thousand. One out of every ten thousand eggs. Have let's just be clear with chance. Let's just be raw meat. I don't know if I go that far. That far in what? If it's like raw meat. I mean, well, salmonella, salmonella, but um, I don't know. Well, when they're not cooked, they're definitely raw. 
Hey, you know, if I get salmonella, I get salmonella. You can say something's raw when it's not cooked. I'd, I'd be but, more, a little more careful with it. But, but I mean, Rocky drank them. That's, that's what I said. Oh, that's no. what I said. Oh, no. Reinforcing. Yeah, You're reinforcing my <laughs> argument. That's what I said. I said, damn it, Sammy, stop making me clean everything. Adam, you just hit like egg on the side of the bowl and you were just sitting there like stirring it. I'm you like, would hate, you could not live in my house because that's how right. I make it. Because we don't, you can make eggs. You, you, yesterday I was like, do you know how to make an omelet? Yeah, I do. Yeah, you're I like, do know how to make an omelet. You're like sitting there going like, is this right? Uh, listen, I can cook certain things. Some things I can't cook, but I try to cook because you know what? You throw yourself into the fire, and that's how you get good at stuff. The other day, I tried to make Adam. Damn it. I, I, I made Adam a grilled cheese. I was showing him to, how to. But I had the burner too hot to where the bread just got yeah. pretty dark, and it was my had, fault because I didn't get the cheese didn't get melted. Yeah, I had nothing to do with this. But Adam was like, oh, I don't care. I'll eat it. And he just ate it, and it was like, oh, sliced cheese on two pieces of bread. Burnt, burnt toast. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> Why do people listen? I'm I'm adapted to. I can eat blackened that. cheese sandwich. I can eat other, anything. And then the other day, I, we we made one on yeah. the George Foreman. It was good. We made it on the George. It's the one where it's clamped down. You know. I made yeah. a peanut butter and, and he, jelly. It's he, cool but, that you can't okay. stop at George Foreman. Oh, oh my God, works wonders. Yeah. Like it, it cooks a sandwich perfectly. The yeah. lean, mean, fat reducing grilling machine. Oh, it's great. I remember the infomercials. I, it's, yeah. I love it, but um. Adam, you were making a grilled cheese, I think, on it, or melted cheese on a sandwich, at least. I remember you, you started to eat it, and I'm like, did the cheese, was the cheese even melted? You're like, no, nah, I just want, no, nah, I just started eating it. I, was, I couldn't wait. I made a peanut butter, I put jelly on peanut butter on a sandwich and put it on the foreman. Is that good? No, it was really runny, and when I ate it, it everything just felt, like spilled out of it. I'm like, damn Wait, it. Was that when you grabbed it? Yes. That's like when you grabbed, you didn't like get a spatula, you just grabbed it off there, and you're like, oh, damn it, that's hot. Yes. I grabbed it and ate it, and the first bite, and burned my mouth, like, oh, damn it, my mouth. And I sent it out there, and I was just like, and he, he's down here, he's probably working on school because he's try hard. Anyway, um, I was like, he was like, are you, he's like, what? And I said, I just burnt my I mouth. I was in the living room, I couldn't have heard you from upstairs. Stars. I was upstairs. I was upstairs like that. Upstairs, like well, I don't know. The, okay. The there's like three floors to this apartment. There's giving the away middle. Your location. Yeah, yeah. You know, like somebody wants to come. Our house. If somebody really wants to take the effort to come here, then like let them. No one will. No one will. No one will take the effort. You got a nice place. I like it. This is Mostly nice. Back. You guys have way more furniture than I had though. Whenever I was, uh, you know, your your age. I had our furniture consisted of the Tupperware containers that we used to bring our belongings into the apartment. So like, oh, we had, we had this big plastic thing that had dishes in it, okay? And then that, after we unload the dishes, then that becomes the TV stand. I've, and you know that that was our our method. <laughs> and um, my 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 freshman year, the guys that lived across the hallway, um, one of them I had like. So there, there was like my mom's. My mom was friends with this um, lady from high school, and uh, she had a daughter that was my age and was also going to IU as a freshman. Yeah. And I hadn't seen this girl in like twelve years, and I went. We went to a graduation party over the summer, and I met her boyfriend there. Yeah. So we were moving in the first day. I that boyfriend lived across the hall from me. I'm like, how is this? I'm like, <laughs> that is a crazy coincidence. That is weird. I was yeah. like, a, a childhood friend of mine who I haven't seen in twelve years, boyfriend. Is living across the hall from me, and I've met him before. Who, who was? It? You've never met. I don't think you met him. No. Who? Was, who's the girl? Because that you don't know her. You never even know. Did she go to Bloomfield at one point? No. Oh. No. No. I was like, oh. But a, a big no. part of the uh, one big thrill about our apartments uh, that I lived in with with my my good buddy Josh. Um, uh, it, it was it was fun living with Josh. Josh and I are totally opposite people, but Josh is such a good guy. But uh, um, I I spent a lot of time in the art building, go mm-hmm. figure, and um, had a I went to the figure drawing sessions. Okay, so that's like a couple a couple nights a week. They they'd have models go in, and in order to be, become better at drawing or painting, you'd show up, and there'd be a nude model, and you would you would paint or draw the nude model. This is pretty par for the course stuff if you're in art school and not a big deal but i'd bring them all home and it's you know back behind here is lovely you can see all these beautiful posters i hate to the rest of the walls look a little bare boys 
My side's fine. Adam oh, that's, a- on that's his Adam's side. side. Okay. Adam, you had all those navigational posters you just haven't put up. Make you look like a scholar. Yeah, those are cool. I have a See, Budweiser if- poster that I've mean, been meaning to put up for a while. But- <laughs> because you said, I remember you said, you're like, that Budweiser poster, it's the only thing going up. That's it. That's, it. that's the only that's thing that matters, dude. Uh, uh, we have bare walls, and, and in order to remedy this, I was just like, I'll put up some paintings. And, and my friend Josh, a uh, great guy, he came home one day from, uh, uh, from class, and like I said, we're totally opposite people. And he walks in, and I saw the expression on his face because there's just naked people all over the walls uh, uh, from, the, from the figure sessions, you know, like yeah. three by four foot um, naked, naked men, naked women um, uh, that have been... You know, <laughs> carefully placed, and uh, a lot of people got a big kick out of it. It was a lot of fun. I still have most of those too. A few of them we gifted uh, gifted to friends um, because they really liked them and said, "You re- you really like this painting? You can they, they could go huh. home with it." Uh, and it was it was fun. And now they're decorating bathrooms all across the country. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. But <laughs> oh, man. but oh, like uh, well, when did you go to IU? Uh, I I was at IU guess. from. Uh, 2005 to 2009. Graduated in 2009. Really? So that was man. 11 years ago. Now this is this is problematic because uh, I'm revealing like kind of my age and when I graduated high school and for some of the you know some people are unsure. They're like he's either he he's 56. Yeah, he, he's he's either 25 or 55. I thought he was one or the other. They, they don't well, quite know. Remember, uh, have you you seen Ocean's Twelve, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. They're at the train station, and they're talking about age, and they're talking like, "Oh yeah, Danny, George Clooney, like you're the oldest." And they're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." They're like, he's like, they're like, you're like fifty six. He's like, what? He's like, how, how old do you think I am? He's like, fifty six. Um, fifty eight. He's like, no, I'm like forty five. <laughs> he's got offended by it. Yeah. it, was real, it the movie's funny, but the way I explained it wasn't. Yeah, the the, the kids at school, uh, they, they'll say things like, you know. Well, the, you've got to be my my mom or dad's age. And I'm like, okay, then how old are they? And then I find out, and it's like 20 years older than I. I'm like, oh, and then they see the they see my eyes get big, and then then inevitably there'll be uh, some sweet kid and be like, you've got to be like 25, right? And I'm thanks, bud. Like it really <laughs> really helps me out, it makes me feel better. Um, but. <laughs> Those guys that lived across the hall from me, I was talking about at Black Friday, they bought a TV. Yeah. You know, the dorms at Reed Hall were very narrow. They were long, but uh-huh. narrow. They got a big TV, they just sat on the floor. It took up, like, so maybe the room, maybe a part. It was maybe, I don't know. It took up, like, three fourths wide of the room to where it's That's just awesome. like, it was just like crushed against the bed and crushed against the wall, but it was just a massive flat screen, uh-huh. and they just play Call of Duty till like 5 a.m. every night. That's so wild. <laughs> yeah. I, I, right I stayed in, uh, I was in McNutt. Crazy and McNutt. It was, it was wild. Uh, yeah, the, you don't have to get too uh, imaginative to figure out what the nickname for McNutt was on campus and all the wild escapades that happened. Um but the, the guys that lived next to me were, uh, they were these, like, freshman football player guys that didn't have, a, I don't think they had as many academic responsibilities as I did. Um, and, but it was cool because I, I remember learning the, um, like, the entire, uh, I think it was a Dr. Dre, The Chronic, that album. <laughs> uh, I learned how to play all, because I was, like, you know, rocker, guitar player, and, uh, and I learned how to play all of the songs on guitar, and it was it was pretty cool. Yeah. Like uh, yeah, so we had a we had a bond there. Uh, we liked the. Well, well, now tell the story about how you were in the shower once. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Well, the, uh, um, I was about the only person that would wake up before nine eight. Well, I mean, probably before noon. Really, I don't know, but I was usually up before nine or before eight, yeah. and I'd have a morning class and. So the only people I really got to know well on my floor in my dorm were the custodians. Uh, that's the only ones I regularly saw. Um, but yeah, one morning I wake up, I go to take a shower, and uh, the the bathroom is disgusting. Um, 
And, uh, I'm, you know, I find the shower stall. You got to pick the one. There's always one. Like, there's oh. the one with the door that don't latch. There's the one with the faucet what, that's hanging we, off we the had, wall. We had a big group message on Group Me my freshman year. Someone made a poll, which is the best shower. Everyone <laughs> voted for the same one. Oh, Everyone yeah. agreed, like, shower yeah. four, best shower yeah, on the floor. Everybody, <laughs> everybody knows what the, the best toilet, the best sink, the best shower. They know what it is. And if it changes, if, one, if you know, something goes awry, they know what the runner-up is. That's going to be the next the, best. The next best one was the big handicapped one that was giant oh, yeah. but it was okay it wasn't as good as four but it was good in a pinch problem with those is they, they get a little colder because they got more room in there it's more room to move that's around that's a lot that's truer yeah I, I've I've figured that out from uh, from <laughs> camping and then staying at campgrounds a lot yeah. like that you'd think that that would be the one to use but it gets a little it's chilly the same in there as a toilet. yeah like 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 in December if you're going to take a 5 a.m. shower at the campground it's uh, it's chilly yeah. it's a big space anyway uh, I was taking a shower one morning, waking up, you know, just very groggy, um, stayed up probably too late or whatever, and I'm trying to start my day, and as I'm showering, I feel something uh, bump my foot, and, you know, we're talking, I knew, I could tell by the texture it wasn't a bar of soap, it was, there was nobody else in the bathroom with me, so I was quite confused, yeah. and I, I rubbed my eyes a little bit, and I looked, <laughs> at my feet is an entire pepperoni pizza <laughs> that is just floating in the water, that like always gets me. Try, trying to go down the drain with the rest of my suds. And I don't know how it got in there. It wasn't in a box, but it was whole. Nobody, Pristine. yeah, it was perfect. You should have. How would it? Oh, no, don't. Why don't would even, you want to eat that? Don't out. even go there. You're gonna say if, eat it if somebody would have paid me like. Five dollars. No. Yeah, I pro- now like the state I'm in right now, I probably would have done it for like ten bucks. You're eating six egg omelets. Would have had more pizza. No, wait. This was on the floor, correct? Nothing was. In it was. It, it was floating was in, in dirty shower water. Never mind. Never yeah. mind. What did Never you think mind. was it? Flew was floating on. Well, I was hoping to God there'd be a pizza box somewhere. Just floating. So if it was like just the bo- perfect no, so, pizza so box. So like the box like, was the was the boat and the yes. pizza was the, was the passenger. Yes. You'd be like, yeah. for for free, I'd eat it. Who I would. Pro- it would probably be like you know. Have you ever seen the movie Hot Rod with Andy Samberg <laughs> when he's falling down the hill and it's like one big jump and it's like dun and it just closes in on him like 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 an idea yeah. gets in his head. So that would be the pizza on a pizza box. If I saw that floating in shower water, I'd be like, I just look at it and be like the music off the movies. Like, yeah. and I'm just like, no idea what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> hot, hot rod. The, gotta see it. If, if in my mind, whenever I tell that story, yeah, it is funny to imagine somebody looking down and seeing a, a pizza, but I was not done showering. So, the funnier thing is imagining me trying to gently kick the pizza away from the drain so that, so that it doesn't uh, come back on my side of the shower. Because it just crept underneath, like, the divider. Like, you know, it was a slow-moving thing. It'd come back every so often to yeah. try to go down my drain. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, that, a, lot of, a lot of crazy things happened. At, at I, you know, my freshman year, I went over to my friend Patrick's dorms. I hadn't been to McNutt. I mean, they'd been, the kids had been there, like, four days. It was just a wreck. Oh like, yeah, it's a mess. Four days and it was nuts. I like, lost my keys at McNutt. Well, my car yeah. keys. Did you well, hear about you that doing story? McNutt? Uh, Luke Van. Well, oh, Luke Van yeah, lived Luke Van lived there. Um, I went over there and you know, like, yeah, I was just honestly, I just went in there to use the bathroom and oh, there's another story, but I don't know if it's appropriate to tell on here. Did I tell you the whole like? Try, I thought I there was like a toilet pa- I thought it was a toilet paper dispensary and it was a it was the box <laughs> okay, well, okay here's the thing you just said should I tell this story and then you just told the story well okay there's a I'm just gonna say the word I don't care so there was a like it's gone it's really gross but there was like I thought it was like something else I thought it was something what different what you're saying is a bad word so, isn't a bad word w- I fine. put my hand in because I was trying to grab it I thought it was like a trash can because I I thought I'd like lost my keys for some reason I was you know a little bit not in my, the right state of mind you know you can only imagine but um, I thought I'd, my keys had fallen in there for some reason because I was looking for them and it turned out to be a tampon where girls put their disposable okay. tampons and right when I get was right when I figured out I was like oh damn it and I was like what do I do what do I do and I'm like shit like this is how people get AIDS so I'm just like like. Shoving my arm in the sink and like burn, damn it! 
and I took a fucking lie. I had a lighter, and I was like, shit's getting real. And I, like, I, what? I, I what took are you it. doing with a lighter? Dude, who knows dude, what I had. Were you going to burn your hand? I was going to do something. I was not about to just oh catch God. something from being, there's the damn centipede. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, and, and, and I ended up, uh, like, washing my whole arm, uh, get found in Germex somewhere. But, um, yeah, just dousing myself in that. Didn't find the keys. Drove home with Brandon Thompson all the way with him saying, you dumbass, you lost your keys. And what then, did, you, did you eventually find them? Uh, yeah, some kid uh, turned it into the RA who turned it into the front desk. And nice, nice. the day, uh, like two days after, I was with my grandpa in Bloomington. I was like, hey, can we go to IU and stop by McNutt? Because um, Luke had texted me they'd found my keys. And I was like, I just need, just need to stop by, uh, you know, McNutt. And he's like, all right. So he went and parked, and I walked, and went in there. I'm like, hey, uh, you, got, you got a pair of keys by chance? And they're like, yeah, which one? Can you believe that? Like, you know, somebody yeah. else loses their keys. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I was like, yeah, it's the Probably forerunner. Probably a story just like this, too. Yeah, well, I ended. <laughs> my car was actually parked at school, and I had been graduated. And the first day, it it had been like the way it was was I was in some kid's parking spot because I didn't get my car till like yeah. So, so some poor kid had to find another spot to park because I was taking it up. But yeah, I'd like to hear your story though about the key thing. If, if oh, I think you meant other you people probably t- had a story like that for you. Is that uh, what you meant? Yeah, yeah. Everybody's lost key epic nut story well, is probably so. I've also lost like my keys in a. I've locked my keys in the trunk like three times um, in my car. That's uh, I did it at Phil Harris <laughs> once with Connor Doughton. Oh. I, I was golfing with Connor and Chris, and I ended up locking my keys in my trunk. And Connor's like, "It's okay, man. It happened to me." But I felt so bad. We ended up me, Chris, and Connor went to Goose Pond Pizza, and I still bad like. Pizza. I was trying to find out what to do because I was like, well, man, what do I do? My keys are locked in my trunk. I can't leave. And, like, this is not the first time that's happened. So my dad just ends up calling AAA, who I've come to quite know the drivers, you know, around the area pretty frequently. They kind of know who I am. Uh, but uh, he came and got my car unlocked. I was like, okay, thanks. And I've also uh, lost my keys in a cornfield in somebody's truck. Let's, I, I, yeah. well, I don't want to go into detail on that no, story. No, no. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. No, you can say that. I just wouldn't go into detail on the rest of it. That's for people listening to this that know you. They know that story. I just wouldn't go into detail. On that. Yeah. Well, at, at McNutt, I remember I, I was taking a uh, taking a piano class um, my freshman year, and uh, we were assured in taking the piano class that every dorm on campus had a piano that you could practice on. Um, and I said, well, "That sounds good to me." And um, so I signed up for the class and uh, needed to practice my piano playing and I could not find the piano in McNutt. And I looked and looked and looked and couldn't find it and went through all the halls that I could. Um, and then finally somebody told me it was down in the basement. And in the basement there was like, they had like a movie rental place down there. Yeah. And had, not a lot going on, uh, but I could not find it. And I kept on going back. I needed to practice piano. Come to find out there was I think they had moved around some rooms, and there was kind of a lounge area prior to going into the women's bathroom. Now, the men's bathroom, you just walk directly in, but in the women's bathroom, they, they had this nice little loungy area, and then there's like kind of an open room. and then you, wow. Well, the, the piano was in the lounge area, which made it for very awkward piano practicing. Uh, me stumbling through, like trying to sight read music and, and play on an out of tune piano while ladies are coming past me to go use the bathroom. Why would I know where the piano is? It was such an awkward thing. It was horrible, but, it, but it made my practice sessions, uh, very to the point And, uh, um, yeah, but but awkward. See, that's that's when you get the cigarette and you get the hat and you're just going to town on the piano just playing. A fedora? Got a, like yeah, a fedora. a fedora and you got a drink a and 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 the girl and cool hat. The, the cool girl, hat. The right. girls are just the women are just going by and they're immediately intrigued. They got to yeah. go pee really bad. They got to go pee, but do they want to stop and listen? Yeah. No, do they, they want to see no, the next use Billy Joel, but they, they have to use the bathroom. Yeah. Do, do you want to hear Wonderwall on piano? Uh, something <laughs> you know, something like that. Wonderwall. Yeah. Your crocodile rock. Dude, that. That's a good song, though. That, That's a legitimately a good song. I like that. The, 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 that that story. I can snap now. I didn't used to be able to. Sorry, side note. Oh, wow. I couldn't whistle. I thought that was embarrassing. Still can't whistle. I can only whistle when I yawn. 
I'm the only factor. other person I know that can't whistle. I can't. I like yeah. whistle, and people are like, are you tried. okay? I've tried. I've whistled here, and Adam's been like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, that's my whistle. I'm sorry. Yeah, do, <laughs> do it right now. Do, see if you no, can. I'm not going to do that here. No, I can try whistle. Like, can't. I can't whistle either. You couldn't snap, you just, you just did, though. You just whistled. All right, that's enough. The magic of snapping your fingers. I did used to be able to snap. I used to be able to do this. I was like, I couldn't get it, but now my fingers are just uh, Okay, so clicks. speaking of snapping, you've, have you, you've seen Reservoir Dogs? The Quentin Tarantino? Yeah, it's been a long it, time. It yeah. real... The art of snapping. The, I, I love that movie. It's a great movie. But there's one scene that just like pisses me off, because like Harvey Keitel is just trying... It's like... It's like trying to be cool. Like if you're being cool, it should be effortless, nonchalant. Right, yeah. He spends like a solid ten seconds trying to light his cigarette by snapping on the Zippo. No, just light the damn thing. What, why are you doing? Like if you're doing it, if you can't do it first try, give up. You're not looking cool if you have to go five times to snapping at a Zippo. I don't. Lighter. I don't like yeah. Zippo that, lighters. Like, I'm like that. I don't like them. Yeah. Why? I don't like, like just them. I know Quentin Tarantino is probably sitting there saying, "Oh yeah, this this is this is it." Yeah. But come on. Yeah, the, the Zippo lighter. I you have to have a certain, uh, almost like a certain wardrobe to I think pull that off. Really. A, bu- a buckskin jacket. So, yeah, that, that or, or a suit, uh, a nice pair of shades. I, I don't know. Or or uh, in 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 you know military like camouflage or something. There, there's only certain circumstances. Yeah. The aviators would pull it off. That would help. Probably so. I always, yeah. Are you an aviators guy? No, uh, I do like aviator glasses, um, but I, they're just too, like the Ray-Bans, they're awful. I don't like it. I'm not big on aviators. Ray, I, I like know, the, the Wayfarers. Are, yeah, that's, that's what I do. The, I get the ones that look like Ray-Bans, but they're not. I'm Ray-Bans are expensive. As, as, as cheap as, as possible. Now, now uh, if you can't notice from uh, the, the angle in this film, I think the camera is a little closer to me, but... Uh, my my head, like the rest of my body, is very large. It's ginormous. Uh, <laughs> and, and so so the the cheap the cheap uh, Ray Ban uh, impersonators, the the fake ones. Um, I, that's what I get because I'm inevitably going to break them, lose them. So I'll buy two or three pair. But that's why I don't understand when people are like, oh yeah, I got a two hundred dollar pair Ray yeah. They'll snap just like the five dollar yeah, pair. That's very true. My problem is that those money. cheap ones yeah. aren't big enough to fit on my ginormous melon. Um, so I have this little little trick, and I've actually uh, gotten I, quite I, good I, at I, it. I break them and reassemble them? Uh, sort of. I, it's borderline. <laughs> I, I just take a lighter, and I heat them up. Uh, but it, it's, it's a delicate procedure, because you have to heat both the front and the back side without melting the lenses. Um, and getting it hot enough to where you can bend them so that the so that they don't, like, you know, flare out ridiculously. yeah. yeah. So all of my cool sunglasses you see me wearing yeah. are $5 or less, and I have melted them to get them to look that cool on my face. To well, see, the like, I bought a pair of sunglasses a few months ago. Um, I had, I'd watched like part of this movie. I never finished it. It was called Inherent Vice with Joaquin Phoenix. He's like this okay. hippie private eye. He's got long hair and big mutton chops, but he wears like these... Oh, well, I've seen that movie. Have you seen it? Yeah. I want to watch... I, I, did, I got like 40 minutes in and quit watching it, but he wears like these... Gold frame, like it's really the lenses cool. are like these seventies kind of. They're seventies glass. They're hippie glasses, but they're like green and almost like hexagonal, like it's geometric all around. Yeah, I know, like, I know what you're saying. But they're sort of like that. But then like the gold thing, it just connects them. It's yeah. not like all the way around. It's just oh part yeah, of it. I, I did that. That's so, cool. well, I'll show you later. But they're really cool. That's why I found a pair on Amazon. Someone was like, "These are great," and then she compared the pic, the one she actually got. With a pair of um, the Ray Bans version, yeah. they looked identical. Yeah. So I just bought that, and they yeah. just look, they look cool. I mean, they're old hippie. Gl- they're not like the John Lennon perfect circles, but it's yeah. like it's jagged all the way around. They're really cool. Yeah, I've I've always loved the the circle glasses, especially like like really cool thick like tortoise shell or imitation yeah. tortoise shell. Uh, the circle frame ones. Um, if I had a skinny face, I'd wear those every day. But I don't. I have a big round baby face. Um, but I, I, I never forget. Whenever I was younger, um, uh, I was gonna go buy new eyeglasses. I wear contacts, but the, I went in and the lady's showing me these new glasses that you could bend, and they, you can't break them. You can't break them. And um, 
she tied them in a knot. That was her thing. It's like, oh, she's going to do that trick again. She's going to tie them in a knot to show how indestructible they were. And they exploded there in the uh, the huh. Walmart uh, eyeglass center. And um, haven't haven't uh, trusted an expensive pair of glasses <laughs> since then. Well